All right, and welcome to Fast Break Breakfast NBA Podcast. My name is Keith Parrish, and I'm here once again with my buddy through the miracle of computer phone. I'm here with Dave DeFore. Dave, happy finals week. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Because the season's nice. almost over? Well, okay. No, I mean, I'm I'm pumped because it's almost the finals, but I'm yeah. also pumped because I haven't turned my TV on in days. What? I'm, I'm home from my road trip. Uh, okay. Hanging with my dog, you know, catching up on stuff and with no television to distract me. It's been I very don't, nice. I don't get this. So I the, like to read, bro. The NBA is basically on hiatus mm-hmm. because the conference finals wrapped up quickly i've been watching so much stuff i watched the jinx part two delightful i watched stacks can i ask you do i really need to know what happens next i know what he did he admitted it it's over that's a wrap we don't need the guy the 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 directly the creator he makes an entertaining documentary dave it was entertaining Uh, i'm not even a true crime person i found it entertaining uh he also did the q anon one right where, I don't actually he, know. I think I think he did, right? Okay. Didn't he get because he got I watched the QAnon doc. Yeah. Was that um, entertaining? They got he got him to say he was doing the Q drops. I mean, this guy is like yeah. I feel like he's pretty good at getting he's good at it. people. Um, he's good at tricking people. Stax documentary on HBO Max. Amazing. It was Stax. really good. About what the Stax it? records in Memphis, Tennessee, um, oh. had Otis Redding, had Isaac Hayes, just R&B label. It was very, very interesting. It was a lot of information I did not know. That was great. I rewatched The Big Heat, a was- war from 1953. It's disturbing. It's it's violent. We're talking 70 years old. I've been watching huh. tons of stuff. I watched. I told you last week. I watched Dune Two. That's right. Oh. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I. Oh, maybe I that was it. on the Patreon episode. I mentioned it. Yeah. So yeah, I watched. It must have been. Yeah. So that's. By the way, if you want an extra episode of Fast Break Breakfast, I answered the listener questions with Joey Devine. Uh, that is up and available for the Patreon supporters. patreoncom slash breakfast. Uh, get access to that. I believe for just. Maybe a dollar a month. I can't remember. Maybe $3 a month is the cheapest you can get in now. Uh, prices went up. We're price gouging like Target. Okay. We're just, we're raising the rates. Hey, no, no, no. We, they they just magically dropped all their prices. Yeah. We they, 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 undid, the prices, they undid the price gouging. We don't yeah. know how these prices got out of control, guys. I, That's our bad. It's whoa. Let's, Listen, let's, let's bring these prices back down. It's pure whoa. profit for me and the prices went up. That's what we had to do. Yeah. Sorry. We're trying to, we're trying to double the CEO. Pay listen, here. if you uh, listen to breakfast. just fast break breakfast episodes, it's barely 50 cents an episode. If you're a grits and grinds and fast break breakfast consumer, come on. What's the number that gets us to a third episode? That That's what I want to know. What's the number of subscribers we need to hit to get a third episode? A third ep- what, 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 weekly, monthly? What are we talking about? A we- third a week. Yeah. Oh, I'm only doing one a week, Dave. Well, and and a Patreon. Well, the Patreon's only once a month. Okay, one bonus episode, a minimum of one bonus episode uh, uh, a month. Um, What's the price to go to three episodes of Fast Break Breakfast a week? Um, It's going to be a lot. Uh, I did that for a while, and I don't don't think I want to go back. Um, All right, we just need 5,000 subs. Yeah, 5,000 subs, I'll do it. We got it. Here's 1,000 subs, I'll do it, okay? If we get... (laughs) If we get 500 new subs at patreon.com slash fast break breakfast, that's right. Yeah, we're going to two a week. Easy. We'll we'll do a pod a thon. Two public next season or something and 24 hours of breakfast. Um, so yeah. If you want a bonus episode, patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. But Dave, I've been watching so much television because there's no NBA. It's been delightful. You, what have you been doing? What's what's your what's this great no television life you've been living? I mean, I, I like to read. So, you know, I've been knocking out some books. I've so, read a little bit. I'm not going to say yeah. it's been all movies. What yeah. have you been reading? What, what's what's a good wreck for me? Ooh, I, you know, there's this book uh, called Nuclear War by Annie Jacobson. Sounds uh, horrible. Very, I don't want to read that. It's awful. Awful, yeah. but very interesting. And then that led me down a rabbit hole where I read 
uh let me let me see the title of the book hang on it's like this is a it's a, a fictional account a historical fiction account looking back at a fake north korean nuclear attack and it's called if i can find my library oh this is amazing podcasting anyway it's like a 2020 commission report on the north korean nuclear attack and it's in the same vein as this other nuclear war book yeah also fascinating and i mean i kind of know um let's say I, I have like a working knowledge of how that system works for us and so those two books were harrowing to read because i also realized that some of the people running these things are right we're always dull. a I, I won't even say not sharp. I'll say hair's breath dull. away. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so great books. Catastrophe. Great books. Yeah, and yeah, great books. Very I started. The, I started books. the mid range theory this week from your buddy Seth Part. Now, yeah, yeah. I've start, I started. I started that. I finally started it. It's a basketball book. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, my name's in that book. Oh, Whew. well, I haven't gotten that. There. How about uh, that? That's. I'm gonna highlight it. I'm just gonna. That's the one thing I'm gonna highlight in the whole just book. Highlight. I don't. Just highlight Dave DeFore. That's it. Take it to the used bookstore, see how much money they'll give me. Um, anyways, Dave, uh, so you've been reading. I thought you were going to yeah. say you've been walking, you, you've tripled your steps. Oh, You're doing no, 40,000 well, steps a day. Well, no, 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 no. I okay. mean, listen, I, I did just finish up this huge road trip. And, yeah. and you know, my mileage usually takes a, a dip when I'm doing that. You know, you have to count for the, the driving and stuff. But uh, yesterday was my first full day back working out in in three weeks okay I, I will tell you because i track everything i do um i had about a 10 percent decrease in strength in three weeks that's not bad honestly because so how, how it can be worse so how much of a decrease are we going to see from christoph's porzingis that's that's where i was heading with this oh i didn't mean to cut you off all right no, I wasn't. Okay. Um, three three weeks, uh, you know, three weeks of just reduced uh, yeah, exercise. Activity. It was it was actually yeah. pretty nice. Like I had I had a few injuries that I had picked up, like a torn tendon in my wrist, that had been really bugging me. And so taking the the time off was actually uh, wound up being a positive. And ten percent is nothing, you know. I get that back in a couple weeks. So yeah, I, I'm how, just how do you get back to the routine? I'd like to ask from a position of ignorance, how do sure. you measure that you've lost 10% of your uh, ability? It's an estimate and uh, okay. it's based on reps and sets and, and weight. And what I like to do, this is like my little, you know, thing that I do because I'm in a marathon, not a sprint, right? I'm not in any kind of hurry to hit any of these goals that I have. Uh, I, my fitness goals are, I need to be able to run a 5k in less than 27 minutes and still be able to fight when I get there. So like, that's not, I'm not kidding. Like if your nuclear war book happens, the hand to hand combat, maybe not that important. Man, well, just in case though, okay. right? Like if you go into a fallout situation rounds after yeah, right. running a 5k and I mean, you just apply that however you want. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to fight, but you know, I got to have energy when I get there. So cardio and strength is important. I, uh, so <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm dreaming about players at the NBA draft combine, like in interviews and they're like, yeah, what are your, what oh, are your workout goals? And it's like, well, I want to be able to pick answer right I, there. I want to be able to run a 5k in this many minutes and then be able to do hand to hand combat. And they're like, what? Like, Oh, I meant, I'm sorry. I want to be able to run a 5k and then make uh 19 out of 23s. That's what I want to be able to make. Sure. Yeah. I, I got to hit, I got to hit 80 out of 103 sure. pointers after my 5k. I did not mean be able to choke somebody out if needed to over the final um can of, of baked beans. Right. Okay. Well, um, I, I, I'm thinking about those baked beans, uh, yeah. but so what I do is, uh, my first workout back is, is a mirror image of my last workout before okay. I left. Yeah. So that way I have, I, I can have like for like now, obviously it's not like for like, for, cause everything changes day to day, but this is why I track like my, I note my sleep, my sleep quality. Like, Hey, do I feel rested when I wake up? I write all this stuff down. So that way I have something to compare it to my baselines, Nobody has an actual baseline because everything changes. Yeah. Did you eat less yesterday? Did you not eat enough? And so for me, I'm just it's a it's a guesstimate, ten percent. But ten percent in three weeks, like that's that's not bad. That means that the little bit of stuff that I was able to get in, um, 
you know, at least maintain some of my fitness, but it doesn't take long out of the gym to, you know, it's why it's hard when you miss a bunch of time, it's hard to get back. Yeah. So many people, they, they can't climb that, that mental mountain and say, Oh yeah, I, of course I'm weaker or slower or whatever. And for me, I just don't care. Cause as long as I am working toward running that fast 5k and being able to fight, I'm good. I'm now imagining the Dave DeFore presidential library where someone has to <laughs> archive all your daily notes. Like, oh, I feel rested today. June 4th, Dave feels rested. Uh, you know what? I do feel rested because I was <laughs> wiped out from yesterday. I, I worked out very hard yesterday. Yeah, uh, My poor dog hasn't had a day where he's gotten that many miles and he's passed out on his uh, his window seat right now. And yeah, I was exhausted yesterday. I ate an entire pizza for dinner. Any leftovers for breakfast? Let's do our breakfast. Let's get the show Ooh, on the yeah. road. I know Dave. Well, I did D- do Dave leftovers. workout percentage. Um, I know. This is a, I'm going to have to check the numbers. It's going to be a Patreon pod. Yeah, this might all go behind a paywall. I saw that you had some questions. Some people asked some some fitness questions. I love those. I ignore those. Well, um, but that's yeah. a different podcast. What's your breakfast? Did you have a My breakfast? breakfast? I did a little bit of uh, a Keith thing. Um, I made Let's, some eggs. Oh, there we go. I also love had it. some leftover ground turkey taco meat mixed it in all right you got a little hash hot working saw, oh, added okay. hot sauce love it threw it on threw it on a tortilla had that my sounds nice amazing breakfast burrito yeah fantastic that sounded incredible 50 uh, grams of ground turkey i i'm not keeping track that's for your <laughs> files um the uh I had once again yogurt and fruit mixed together, some blueberries, some raspberries with some whole milk vanilla yogurt. It was um, it was delightful. That's good. I feel like I'm in a constant state of trying to finish the fruit in our house before it goes bad. My okay, wife's so the how are you over purchasing fruit at, at a time? In my mind. Okay. Well, right now, you know, our kids eat a lot of fruit and we don't want to deprive them fruit, but sometimes I feel like my wife's been doing this more. She buys like a, a a pound of raspberries and a pound of blueberries. You can't eat a pound of raspberries and like they go bad. They all get Ra- they all get mushy. Are, yeah. yeah, you're just it's a race against time. I love them, but I stopped buying them because of that. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how many raspberries you're, you're supposed to eat in one setting sitting. It's just there's too many raspberries. They're all getting mushy. So it's yeah, race. That's 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 what I do. Race against time against the fruit. Blueberries but, hold up. Well, oh, blueberries! Yeah, they got they got like a. As long as you keep them dry, and they got that the skin on there. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You, you can. It, it even an old an old blueberry just gets drier, tougher. Yeah, uh, an old raspberry becomes just dissolves into like a it's, paste. It's disgusting. Yeah, again, I stopped buying them. Yeah. But by, by the way, strawberry season right now. Mm, strawberries are holding. Up I strong. had I ate a strawberry Sunday in San Francisco from a farmer's market. You know, hey, yeah. free sample. My God. So that's how, good. That's how they get you hooked. That's it. Um, oh, I was hooked. Yeah. All right. So those were our breakfasts. After our breakfasts, we moved to our breakfast in bed. Apologies. This is my chance usually to make right what I got wrong on a previous episode. It's frequently the first time we talk about the NBA. Um, I got a couple of things I could atone for. One... On the episode last week, Dave, you and I answered a listener submitted question where they pitched a trade proposal, like a Spurs trade to the Cavaliers. And we both liked it um, for the Spurs specifically. I listened back to it. I think it might have been a horrible trade for the Cavaliers. So I feel bad about giving it like a stamp of approval. The trade was, I believe if I remember correctly, the trade was um, the fourth pick, the eighth pick, Keldon Johnson, Zach Collins, and a future first for Jared Allen and Darius Garland. And I think that's more so a trade offer to get you like just Darius Garland. I don't feel like you could get and Jared Allen in that deal. I think maybe it's too much like a four, eight plus Keldon. I mean, Zach Collins is bad money. Like it's not, that's not a positive for a trade. So like, Keldon Johnson plus four and eight in a future first. That seems like a fair price for Garland. And I, it seems also maybe like more than the Spurs would be willing to give up. So, yeah, we said that trade was cool for the Spurs. I think it was horrible for the, the Cavs. I feel bad about that. I want to apologize. I don't have an apology. Okay. I know it's not, I, I, it's I, not really your thing. 
yeah, saying well, you're but sorry, also, Dave? Well, that's not that's not true. Okay. I'm just not sorry often because <laughs> I try to avoid being sorry. Right. Yeah. I, I try not to do things wrong. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I can't think of uh, anything I would need to apologize. It's for. fine. Um, I've been right. I've been so right, Keith. So much right living. Also, I could apologize for this. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. But like the, the NBA, of course, this year has extended the NBA draft to two <laughs> days. It's first round Wednesday, second round Thursday. I feel like when this was first announced, we all. Oh, we had, at four Eastern. So, yeah, that's another part of it. It's at 4 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, three o'clock my time central, 1 p.m. on a California Thursday for you, Dave. Um, feels early. But I would say initially the response, whenever this, whenever this news came out, just about the two-day thing, most people are like, the second round is going to be its own broadcast? Is that a good idea? And then... Now that we find out it's at 4 p.m. Eastern, we're like, eh, is that a good idea? But I do feel like, you know, we're, we like to bust chops whenever anything gets announced. Yeah. We're like, ah, it's dumb. Take right. fouls will never catch on. Um, but I got to say, maybe my apology could be, I was not going to be watching ESPN at 3 p.m. on a Thursday before this. Now I will be watching ESPN at 3 p.m. on a Thursday. So maybe it's a good move. It's also, it's breaking up something. It's like you're getting a whole free thing. We were watching the draft. We weren't watching it for Mark Tatum in the I second round. I wasn't watching the second round of the draft. I mean, I was, much. but not me. now it's its own thing. You're not going to lose any ratings from the first round by moving the right. second round another day. You get a free television program in my mind. It's not, you oh, know, I understand I'm saying? Like, why they're doing it. I know why it's like splitting a four hour podcast into two, two hour episodes. It's just, it's just good. It's smart. But here's the problem. What's the problem? The draft already takes too long. Why? What do you mean? Takes too long. An hour. Um, It's too long. It's too much time. Just, I, I just am not interested in watching people. I don't know. It's very performative ceremonial stuff. I mean, you know, the television broadcast itself if, if all the teams were in one room, not really you know a thing. I mean? Yeah. Like throw them all in a room, get an arena, put them okay. all out on the court. Let them, let them cook in person. We, you all know, right. all the trades done live there in person, we can watch them, you know, like uh big brother cam or whatever you want to call it. But overall, man, I, I just, I, I'm not into, uh I'm not into the NFL draft. I don't, I just just get through it. Both of all all sports drafts are the thing that essentially social media was made for. You just need a ticker tape printing out the results. That's it. You don't need. I mean, I don't I don't love I don't need the interviews with the prospects even I like it's fun to see what they're wearing. But also, this is more in the NFL than it has been the NBA recently. They just they just tell us all these tragic stories. It's like, I don't want this. This is awful. This is like reading a, a book about possible nuclear war. I don't, <laughs> I don't need this in my brain. Yeah. I just, yeah, I want, I want to enjoy the draft. So that being said, in a, in a world where the television networks are trying to get viewers. Yeah. I, I like up. sports. You got an oh, extra, excuse me, excuse me. I like games. I, I like, like the games. games. I, and, uh, I just want to get to that. So you say that, but as a, as a content producer, Oh, I do enjoy, I enjoy thinking about the NBA. I mean, mm -hmm. I, like we're going to talk about some on this episode. I'm going to throw some free agent names at you. Cause that's where my head's at. I'm thinking post finals. Uh, but I, I enjoy thinking about the team building. I enjoy thinking about fake trades between the Cavs and the Spurs. Um, my listeners for like uh grits and grinds, the YouTube views are up like 500% since the Grizzlies stopped playing games. Like when the, when the season ended, people are like, finally, I now want to think about the Grizzlies again. <laughs> so we now have the hope of an off season. So well, I understand you're not competing it. with the Grizzlies anymore. Yeah. Well, I, that's, I mean, I, you mean for, for viewership? Yeah, I guess. I don't think I have a lot of Patreon supporters who tell me in the Grits Grind Slack channel, uh, they stopped watching Grizzlies games. Just listen to the podcast to find out how the Grizzlies did. That's the way to do it. Standing ovation for all of you guys. I don't know if you understand how how horrible the end of the, the last two months of oh, the Christmas season was. I know how bad it was. Yeah. yeah. 
We, uh, yeah, it was a lot of Jordan Goodwin, who honestly, I enjoy watching him play, but yeah. it was a lot. Um, anyways, those were our apologies, my apologies. Um, let's take a quick break and let's come back and we'll talk about the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. All right, Dave, in the last week, the Minnesota Timberwolves did not pull off a miracle rally. They succumbed to the Dallas Mavericks. There was at least a, a, a slight heartbeat shown from the, from the Timberwolves as they pulled off a game four victory, but then in game five, oh my, Luca and Kyrie just destroyed them. Um, what were your feelings about the way the Mavericks ended that series? I mean, I, I feel like that's what we saw in the previous few games, you know, um, outside of game one, we, we watched the Mavs be the better team, e even in the game that they, that they wound up blowing, uh, without Derek lively. And then they had Derek lively back. So yeah. I wasn't shocked to see him just handle it. Um, Luca has this ability to, to get to that next level that, that we've, you know, that we only see from the guys who win championships, you know, uh, Nikola Jokic, Steph Curry, like LeBron, like he, he can ascend to that next level. And he did it the 20 points in the first quarter. I mean, that's, that's Luca throwing the knockout punch. And, um, I don't know, Minnesota just never responded. So I wasn't really shocked to, to see the Mavs come out and do it again. I mean, I picked them, I picked them in six just cause I did think Minnesota would get a game or two. Um, you know, I, I assumed that Ant would have one game where he got to, you know, 40 or something and, and they would pull that one out, but, uh, I'm not surprised there Dallas, this Dallas team has been elite for months. I mean, they, they were 16 and four, I think going into the playoffs and, and yeah. really we're just rolling. Um, they've been, they, they definitely are, are a little bit of a, I mean, them being a five seed is, is, is not really fair to, to everybody else. I feel like we see this more and more though, where we can come up with these storylines, maybe it's not, or analysis that like, yeah, it's not really a five seed. And we had like last year, the, the yeah. Lakers were like, Oh, they're not really a seven seed. They are eight seed, whatever they were. Um, the injuries for them, right? Like Cause it, injuries it kinda... and both that team made trade deadline moves. And then the Mavericks of course made big trade deadline moves. Part of me wonders though, it feels I don't know if this is right. It does feel a little bit like we're we're still we're tailoring our story of the season based on the results. Like this is how this tree branch fell. Yep. Now we're just gonna draw the story. Or it's like the Price is Right game, the uh, Plinko, yeah. where you, where you drop the disc in, and so some NBA teams have this as one of their like timeout or halftime entertainment yeah. things. You drop in the disc it randomly bounces around and it ends up in the slot at the bottom. And then you're like, Oh yeah, I knew the Mavericks were going to do this. And I, I've, I've been having fun like with it. this because again, like they were slight favorites over the Clippers, but like they were underdogs to the thunder and the Timberwolves. And then once you see them play these, this, you know, these series now, they where should you're not like, have been, they should not have been underdogs to the, to the, Thunder for sure. I mean, but I, that's I think, easy to say once it lands in the little well, Plinko mean, I, slot at the end. I get it. I get where you're it, like, oh, I mean, I they looked better than the Thunder in every game. Yeah, yeah. I've been having fun with this because I feel like still think like Mavs fans. I talked about this some last week, but like sure. Mavs fans, they wanted Kid to be fired. Oh yeah, like this year. And then they're like, we're getting so much disrespect. It's like this. How could you not see where a title can enter? But like the five seed thing, you know, they have a chance to be one of the lowest seeds ever to win an NBA title. Yeah. Um, one of the fewest uh, regular season win totals, you know, to possibly win a, a, a title. Um, but the, the Luca thing, the knockout punch thing, the game five, like, oh, you think you have something brewing here? Take that. Take that. Take, it's just like. It's unbelievable. And we've seen him now in, in multiple seasons have these closeout performances. And Michael just... Finley's taking the beer away now. So <laughs> what what do we Look make of this? If you haven't this. seen it, there's a, there's a social media clip of Luca. He's not shotgunning the beer. No, no, no. He's, he's just, just sipping out. a beer. But Michael Finley, who's in the, the, the Mavs front office, just walks up to him, takes the beer and walks away. <laughs> what, what 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 happened there 
Uh, I mean, they probably just I don't want him doing that in the hallway. Okay. Maybe it was a non, was it a non league Listen, sponsor beer? Maybe. I don't know. But also, had he uh, had new, six already? New, new ownership. Oh, the Adelsons don't like the, 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 any who impropriety knows? on camera. I mean, who knows? I mean, you know. Congrats to Mark know. Cuban finally having the success once he finally let go of the reins. I mean, not really. Apparently, he still has some. Is there a we? Was there a weirder the ownership? Um, face face off, or, or series? Because you obviously have the Timberwolves' extremely right. strange situation, and then you have yeah. Cuban, who sold his majority share of the Mavericks, but still apparently retained some control. Yeah. But does he actually have control? I don't Is think this so. like you give the child the the toy wheel, and then he's he's, he's a mascot? Yeah. Okay. You know, was the broken home nature of the Timberwolves situation the reason they were so bad at home? I, honestly, I, what if Anthony Edwards, he didn't know who to dap up <laughs> and he had that weird handshake with A-Rod that A-Rod was very excited about? Yeah. But, you know, I, um, I the Timberwolves it, definitely was weighing on his mind. I, I'm going to have to walk up and. What? How did this go again? It was very awkward. Glenn Taylor likes his hand shaking this way. How Mark Laurie, A Rod, haven't worked it out yet. Um, no, he and A Rod had a handshake. It just, it was weird. The uh, Timberwolves lost three games at home in the conference finals. They lost five out of six home games in the final two rounds. They played in the playoffs. We had a listener question from Caleb. Too much moisture in the air. What's worse? getting swept in a conference finals or losing in a gentleman's sweep while losing three home games. Ooh. Got to be the losing the three home games. But you at think? least. And you finish I guess if you're, if, mm, if you're the lower seed, Oh, three home games. So you're the high seed, you're the higher seed. Yeah. At least you lose at home. I guess you don't have to get on the plane after. I mean, I feel like I feel like if you're going to lose a series, losing at home can be better. Uh, I guess if you're it, game seven, not as much on the way out, but like eh, no one ever really boos on the way out. I feel like the booze happen earlier. Then there's the acceptance of defeat. You get a nice little ovation. Leave. Everyone feels fun. I mean, it was an absolutely a successful Timberwolf season. The fans are happy. Like seeing all those losses at home, that's tough. I mean, season ticket holders, people who shelled out for for those tickets. I mean, those are pricey tickets, and you're just catching loss after loss. And that's right. I mean, how many how many young Timberwolves fans got converted into Doncicism, where they're like, my dad took me to this uh, took me to three conference finals games when I was nine, and I watched this guy Luka Doncic humiliate my team, and that's my favorite player now. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Some kind of a Joker origin story. Yeah, that's the origin story of a bunch of Mavericks fans up in Minneapolis. Um, however, getting swept, that feels permanent. That feels like sweeps. Everyone remembers a sweep, it feels like. I feel I like know. also. I think, I think the gentleman sweep. The extra, the extra 48 hours of joy. When you won game four, you had, I mean, you felt great about getting a win, and then you had 48 hours to dream about, wow, what if Could we, we do, do it? it? What if what it? if we make history? Why not us? Someone's got to do it. Maybe that Derek Lively won't coaching, play again. Right? Epic <laughs> coaching opportunities there. Why so, not I mean, us? I think, yeah, I think... I feel like our entire philosophy about basketball is it is is it it's an experience that like it takes time and so like yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't give up I wouldn't give up those forty eight hours or forty two hours or however long it was of being like hey we won maybe we can win another game why wouldn't us and then you get the cold hard reality of Luka Doncic is murdering everyone we love right now in front of us I don't know I mean brutality um. Hey, now, so yeah. At some point, remind me to to bring up Dr. Pepper before we finish the pod. I, this I got a text message that was very weird. Wait, what'd you say? Dr. Pepper. 
Bring up Dr. Dr. Pepper. Pepper. Do you yeah. want to bring it up now? I mean, sure. It passed Pepsi as the second most popular soda in America. Feels like a coup. Dr. Pepper is the second most popular soda in uh, America? Yes. And you got a text about that. Because it seems weird. I thought you got a text about basketball, breaking no. basketball news. Hey, no. an insider just texted me. You're never going to hey, believe who Dr. the Cavaliers Pepper. are going to hire. Dr. No, Pepper. You, you got a yeah. pepper about, you got a, you got got a text, text about, about Dr. Pepper. I get texts about random things. That was a random one. I don't even know what I would have guessed the second most popular soda in America was. Pepsi, right? I don't know. I might have. I bet Everyone it's thinks Sprite. I mean, well, it really, it's Diet Coke and Coke? Diet Coke, but I think they they probably just put all the Coke derivatives. Liquid under. death, water, is that I don't, all right? Greatest marketing um, gimmick of all time. That's why it's doing well. All right, so the Mavericks advance. The Timberwolves storybook season comes to a close. The uh, the finals start on Thursday. Christos Porzingis is supposed to play. He's expected to play. Um, a healthy for my purposes, as far as I know. But, so everything I'm doing going in, I'm looking at it like he's healthy. I feel like last week when we assumed the Mavericks would win, we kind of thought the Mavericks might be the team to beat, although we acknowledge that talent-wise, the Celtics seem to have a superior level of talent. The the betting line for the for the finals is significantly in favor of the Celtics. They're they're kind of bigger favorites than I thought they would be. That probably is just because I live in a Western Conference blinder world where that's all I think about and that's the majority of what I watch. So do you feel that's accurate that the Celtics are like minus 200 favorites or do you think do you still feel like, you know, the Mavericks are are right there with them? I think the series is closer than than it looks on paper, but it's because I'm not sure if Luca is measurable at this point. Um, like he is clearly on his way to being best player in the world in the conversation, right? Like, I mean, he this is a top five guy. Um, but the Celtics have so much talent. And if Porzingis is healthy, which I'm assuming he is, they have a uh, uh, one through five that's that matches up very very well with Dallas, but I think that individuals have such an outsized impact on these playoff games that my natural like analysis tends to lean toward that and favor that a little bit. So I don't know. I, I think minus two hundred feels right. I yeah. I would think a sensible person looks at this matchup and says, oh. Celtics in six, Celtics in seven, maybe Celtics in five. Um, and, and then you swing the other way and you say, okay, and by that same turn, maybe you could get Mavs in seven. Um, but Mavs in six starts to seem more unlikely. Um, personally, uh, I think Luca is just that good that it kind of evens the odds a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's also kind of funny when we when we talk about that stuff about the Mavericks being a five seed and not having that much regular season success. And then you look at the Celtics and you're like, they won a ton of games. Uh, you know, they're, they're mid sixties in wins. They went 12 and two in the Eastern conference playoffs. They've been plus 10 net rating all season, including the playoffs. And you're like, all right, so maybe we're just underestimating them because they did not win with style points in the postseason. I mean, Tatum, like and Jalen Brown, that one too, it, it just comes down to maybe does Luca have the extra powers where it doesn't matter who the second guy is to Luca. Um, I also wonder like what impact, if any, will like the revenge nature of like Kyrie Irving, like will it be does that matter at all? I mean, I don't know how much more motivation you you would need in the finals. But Kyrie also, I'm sure he wants to stick it to the Celtics. Um, that part of it is amazing. I don't, I don't know if Porzingis cares. Like Mavericks fans aren't, aren't going to boo Porzingis. No, the Celtics not. fans are going to boo Kyrie For like sure. crazy. Yeah, Mavs fans are, are not going to. I mean, they might boo him, but it's not going to be with any sort of vitriol. Um, I think that the Porzingis thing could have worked if he was healthy enough at all. 
Um, the Kyrie angle of this is pretty funny. I don't think Kyrie's going to go in there with a chip on his shoulder. Kyrie seems, again, like this has been a great Kyrie season. Yeah. That seems pretty happy playing basketball. Um, I, I think if that may, that may piss Celtics fans off even more. If he's unbothered, you know, well, just does he, when's the last time Kyrie burned Sage? Is he still doing that? I think that that's a part of his thing. I will know. We'll know free game game one. Is he gonna? Maybe he only. Jay King, I asked Jay King if he was gonna burn Sage, and he didn't have. He didn't only have in South. Well, I feel like just in Boston, he's just like, listen, I gotta, I gotta smoke out whatever's going on in Boston. It's the aura, needs a little Sage. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. Um, I, I I continually when I read all the analysis of it, just realize I guess I'm underestimating the Celtics. Um. I feel like they are so tied to their playing style of the three sources pointers. tell me no on the stage. Okay. Sources say no. Is this your same source that gave you the Dr. Pepper news? Different, different source. Okay. Different source. Um, <laughs> I feel like the Mavericks can win a game when they make eight, three pointers. And I'm not sure the Celtics can. And so maybe I feel like because this of is, Ky Kyrie and Luca, they have more avenues to victories. I'm talking to the perfect person to have this conversation with Keith. Because there is not a single team that embodies the modern NBA as much as the Celtics. I mean, when you look at the way they play defense, you know, they constantly switch. They're, they're top five uh, as far as defensive possessions that where you're switching. They play a lot of drop, right? This is all modern NBA stuff. And they shoot tons of threes, often off one pass. A lot of one pass threes. And so when you have those, instead of inside out, threes which is where i think the celtics and most basketball teams have their best uh, looks at three there's a world in which if you could tell me you know 45 percent or 30 percent on their three-point percentage i'd tell you if they won or not and the celtics are one of those teams if they shoot it well they win and if they don't it feels like they lose um it, it's a little bit like the bucks like the budenholzer bucks where they could withstand missing shots if you also missed and and they could make if if they made and you made they were going to win but they can't win a game where they can't hit threes and you're making them they just cannot they're not built for it their volume from three is too high so they have too many possessions where they come up empty and this is again one of the greatest offenses in NBA history uh definitely one of the best defenses i mean this team has been excellent all year but in the playoffs where things get tight and you're playing against an elite defense which i mean i think the dallas mavericks defense has been amazing in the playoffs um i think you could run into trouble the one thing that's working to their advantage is that the dallas mavericks defense kind of soft closeouts they're they don't they're really looking to pack the paint they want to keep you out of the box and they, they're going to let you do the one pass, shoot the three. So they're hoping you just never find rhythm. They're going to they're gonna let a guy, I think probably Porzingis at first, take a bunch of shots. Mm -hmm. They got to take them, and they need to make a few. Uh, and for Dallas, it doesn't work that way. Dallas, they've got two guys who can carve you up. So I, I'm glad that you brought that up because I know how much you hate watching the three point shooting contest. Yeah, I really do. Um, it's not going to be that. Sorry, your your, me that. your mention yeah. of the Budenholzer Bucks reminded me of my Plinko theory, or by you know, like the 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 arrow hits hits the barn, and then you paint the the target around where the arrow That's hit. It. That's the analysis of like the Budenholzer Bucks, where like a lot of people were like, "Oh, Budenholzer finally shortened his rotation and addressed these criticisms of his coaching style." That's how the Bucks finally came through with their title, and Budenholzer was like, well, "I didn't change anything. I just that year we won." You know, it's like I did. That's it. I did the same thing that made me lose every other year. Um, yeah, and so like if PJ Washington, Derek Jones make threes, if Luca makes threes, like you pointed out the three foot percentages that would might be the predictor or the, our final analysis yeah. of the series, you know, like Luca made his threes against the Timberwolves. That was my thing. Like if Luca makes his threes, they're going to win. And well, they, they, Luca did. Um, I also wonder about the, the offensive rebounding for the Mavericks and how good it was against the Timberwolves and like, how are the Celtics or the Celtics going to be able to keep, 
Lively and Gafford all off the glass. That feels like a big question to me. Um, I mean, I think I, I think I was leaning. I I lean Mavericks in six or seven. Um, I will be super shocked if it's a four or five game. I mean, obviously four would be weird, but like, I don't think the Celtics are going to win in five or six. I it, it seems even. It seems like a toss up. It, it I don't know. I hope it goes seven. To be honest with you, I, I and you know me. It's very unlike I don't, you. Don't feel that way. Yeah, but I actually think that we could get. I mean, number one, Jason Kidd has been coaching his tail off. Um, yeah. I think that the the buttons he's been pushing, uh, and I'm sorry, there's street sweeping happening outside. Um, yeah, I don't know how, how loud that is, but can't hear he, it. Okay, perfect, great microphone. Uh, the he's been pushing all the right buttons. I think we could see some really unique things. I mean, did anyone expect Jaden Hardy to play big minutes? You know, crucial minutes. In the Western Conference Finals, I didn't. He wasn't. He was out of the rotation. The guy wasn't getting minutes at all. So you know, I, I do think that we're going to see some interesting wrinkles. And for Boston, maybe we get to see what happens when these guys actually stick together. And and I say this as a guy who realizes I'm holding them to a very high standard. Uh, this is I've been doing this for like the last week. This is sort of my hey. I know this team is great I, or good. I like to see them be great. I think a seven game series gives us a chance to see what it looks like if the Celtics hit that great level. Yeah. I also wonder about the Celtics. Is it going to matter that maybe they have, um, I mean, I, maybe le- I was going to say less depth, but maybe that's inaccurate, even though Jaden Hardy got like some playing time. Yeah, like yeah. they're at least the Mavericks have been able to use some bench players. I mean, notably lively coming off the bench, but like they really Josh haven't green has given them. Some Josh green's been, minutes, yeah, he, he he's made especially. some plays. But then you, but then you see um, on the Celtics side where it's like Sam Hauser plays, Peyton Pritchard plays, but Sam not Hauser, always. And Sam Hauser has not been shooting the ball well. Um, he 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 can hold up better defensively than Pritchard can. Um, I don't think Pritchard can play much, if at all, in this series. Kyrie and Luca will both target him, and with yeah. the way that the Celtics like to switch, that's a huge problem. So. I, Push comes to shove, we're going to see some evolution from the Celtics one way or the other. I don't think that they're going to be able to switch the way that they like to. Jalen Brown is going to start the game for sure, guarding Luka Doncic uh, Mm -hmm. game one. Uh, We'll see how long that stands. I think that he's done a decent job against him, but this this version of Luka, I, I don't know that you can guard him with one guy. They don't like to blitz. The Celtics don't like to blitz. I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to find a way to get the ball out of Luka's hands. So, this is going to be a series where we're going to find out just how good the Celtics are at playing basketball versus just doing the things that they do with the talent that they have uh, mm-hmm. that gets them through games. Whereas with the the Mavericks, man, if you watch how they've been mixing up their coverages defensively and the way that they play offense, I mean, that stuff is sustainable. Luka Doncic forces you to change your pick and roll coverage multiple times throughout the game. Like you need three or four. This guy, he's not easy to coach against. Keith, I'll just say that you start thinking that, you know, basketball, and then this guy just solves your, the problem you throw at him in three or four possessions. It's not fun. And I think that if you're the Celtics, you're just going to have to be flexible, aggressive, and especially aggressive with abandoning stuff when it goes away. Like the drop is not going to last that long because Kyrie and Luca can just dominate from the mid range. And that's the part where you start getting into the make or miss game. Because I know the Mavericks are going to get their 1.16, 1.2 points per possession. Mm -hmm. I know it's coming. They're going to have a run where they're going to score four, five, six times in a row. What happens when the Celtics clank a few threes? You know, do they start getting a little bit ahead of themselves? I feel like there's more guys on the Celtics where I can envision those, those games where they're clanking threes. Like Derek White has had series where it's not been. And I love Derek White and Drew Holiday has had, I mean, he basically um, shut us up last series, but like all of a sudden he started hitting all his shots. Um, but like Derek White's that it, Porzingis has had bad shooting series and he doesn't, Porzingis, not a lot of postseason experience, you know, like this is going to be very new for him. Like I think the Celtics have more experience up and down their roster for the finals, but, but not Porzingis. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting getting Porzingis back at least gives the Celtics six guys 
And then it's like, what? I can mean, you, can you just sneak five Sam Hauser minutes in there? Five yeah. Peyton Pritchard minutes. Um, but this is this is the beauty of all this time off. And if you look at the schedule, they've got time off between games. We're gonna get the best of the best. I'm I'm actually I'm calling it right now. I'm not allowing any excuses for this finals. There are none. Okay. None to be had. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's well rested. No, nobody can say, oh, it's been a long season. Yeah, but you just had a vacation. So this is it. This there's no bubble. There are no injuries. Not yet. No excuse finals. Hey, if it happens during the finals, who cares? Hey, right. guy got hurt. All right, let's uh let's move to the awards segment of the program, Dave. I don't I mean we didn't officially make picks really. I'm gonna say Mavs and picks. six. You don't have to make I'm saying Mavs and six. All right, we're Mavs both saying Mavs and six. All right, Mavs and six. Um, and that's that's an upset. I might have, I might have, I might have waited. I need it. to see game one. I always. I'm seeing, see I'm one. seeing Luka Doncic at plus two hundred for MVP. I think he can get that if he loses. Um, anyways, uh, awards segment of the show, the International Stack House of Pancakes Award, given each week to the worst performance in a box score. I was worried we wouldn't have anyone to talk about because there were only two games. No, we're good. Um, honorable mention game seven, Nas Reed, two for 10 game seven, Kyle Anderson, three for nine. Nas was horrible. I'm sorry. I said game seven, game five, of course, game five, game five. Nas Reed, two for 10, uh, game five, Kyle Anderson, three for nine. Um, our three nominees from last week, uh, game four, PJ Washington was three for 13, 10 points, five rebounds, two assists, one block, one turnover, three personal fouls. Game four, Kyrie Irving, six for 18, 16 points, two rebounds, four assists, one steal, four turnovers, two personal fouls. And then game four, Luka Doncic. He was seven for 21, 28 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists. So he gets triple-double, one steal, three turnovers, four personal fouls. So we have three Mavericks from the same game, all getting nominated. P.J. Washington, three for 13, 10 points. Kyrie Irving, six for 18, 16 points. Luka Doncic, seven for 21, 28 points, and a triple double. Um, feels PJ. like, yeah, how's it going to go? I, I, I like, I like Kyrie's job? higher shots. Yeah, but, but the shot diet, man. Kyrie's taking some tough shots. PJ Washington, you've got one job. It's not right. that difficult. I mean, gotta stick them. the guy had been on for so many games. The reason they're in the finals. That's my, oh, yes. that's my post analysis. Sure. The <laughs> yeah. X factor. There's no PJ Washington making shots. <laughs> no chance. All right. Congr congratulations. PJ Washington. Um, with your three for 13 winning and in enter carrying, carrying the maps to the finals alone. Stack house of pancakes. Um, finally, Dave. The Detroit Pistons hired Trenchard Langton. They finally fired Troy Weaver in the team's press release thanking Troy Weaver. Did you see this? No. They listed his, his accomplishments. They misspelled Jeremy Grant's name. And they also included the acquisition of Corey Joseph as one of his accomplishments. So misspelling, misspelling a name. I mean, are you surprised? Did, no one cares about anything they do. No one's paying attention to anything. Period. Yeah. It's why cars are awful now. Well, you, that and deregulation. Dom, Go Tom Gores is to blame for Detroit's auto Tom problems. Tom Gores is a problem. Yeah. No, no one cares anymore. Misspelling a name. And I mean, you know, the system had, the actual spelling in there. You would think one programmed for sure programmed it into the spell check after the 50th time that they made a social post or whatever they were doing while Jeremy Grant was there, um, you know, taking all those shots. So where, where's, so Je where's Jeremy Grant playing next year, Dave Portland. <laughs> He's got the best job in sports. The honestly. Yeah. Like that's, Hasn't Playing. played a game in April in four years. Uh, just gets shut down every year. It's pretty Mixed. good. Yeah. I, I, you know, can I, you know, play 50 games a year, live in the Pacific Northwest? 
I can't. So I, I'm in such off season mode where I'm like looking at all these, these draft things. And it's like, all right, if I heard the trailblazers really like Cody Williams, where it's like, what are they going to do with Jeremy Grant? Why do they still have Malcolm Brogdon? And what are they doing with like Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons and their whole team? And they're still going to be 14th in the West, no matter what, you know, next I, we didn't, we didn't get to the free agents. Yeah. But next week when we talk free agents, uh, we should oh, talk about Portland. Well, I mean, there's just so many, what are they going to, there's so many guys. My, my thing about the free agents is just that there's so many one we've, we've mentioned this before. There's so many teams that have players that, that they need to trade. They just need, they need to trade them. And then there's so many free agents. There's like a weird number of free agents this year that are useful players. And then there's actual, a few free agents. Like most of them we assume are coming back. Like, I don't know, like Paul George could change teams. Clay Thompson could change teams. You assume the bird rights trap will keep most like OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam from going anywhere. And then there's a lot of restricted free agents like Patrick Williams is going to get overpaid. But then there's this pile of just players that got to go somewhere. And they're hoping the Pistons are, are, are the one calling their name. They're hoping they get misspelled in a press release later. Because like if the Pistons and Magic don't get you, I don't know who's paying all these guys. Yeah. I also look, it's going to be a huge summer for trades. There's yeah. a lot of guys who are going to move and there's people we haven't even thought of yet that are going to move. It's exciting. Like again, Damian Lillard, uh, you think he wants to be in Milwaukee? I don't, you, you keep talking about this. What do you know? Is this your Dr. Nothing. Pepper source? This is my Dr. Pepper source. Your Dr. So Pepper you source it. has yeah, the guy. inside Let line yeah. on, on Damian Lillard getting out of Portland. Well, anyways, um, Dave, thanks for uh, coming on and talking with me. We'll keep it a little short. There's no basketball or no NBA, at least. Um, uh, CNBC is talking about the WNBA, though. Do we need to get? Um, no, I'm avoiding all the W. <laughs> I don't follow other sports. Um, yeah. You know, WNBA is a different sport. I, I just don't follow it. I don't have time um, yeah. and no one pays me to do, do it. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of uh, like the NFL, you know, just don't yeah. have time. Sorry, I, I got books to read. Yeah, I got I got I got old movies to watch and MLS matches to watch. Um someone yeah. should pay me to watch the MLS. Uh, no one I'm, should wait a second. It, honestly, it's not that good. Um now so, Keith. Yeah. yeah. Spin what? off. Spin off MLS. Spin off MLS. Uh, I don't I don't and know I'll, enough. I'll, I feel I feel awkward. I'll break the news on what I'm doing this summer. It sounds oh I can't wait. Anyways, uh thanks everybody for listening. If you want to support the show, get that bonus content, that bonus episode that released last Thursday. That's at patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. All right. You guys are the best. Thanks for listening. And remember, breakfast is the most important thing. Yeah, no apologize for being G and G. Fast break break, man. You understand? I will.